It's called the Benadryl Challenge. Investigating the deadly Benadryl Challenge on TikTok. Intentionally overdosing on the antihistamine Benadryl. There is a dangerous social media challenge that is encouraging young people to intentionally overdose on medication and then film the effect that it has on them. This has resulted in countless hospitalizations and even some deaths. As a physician, I've cared for patients who are harmed by the TikTok Benadryl Challenge. And in this video, I'm going to explain how it got started and why the 13 signs and symptoms of Benadryl overdose and what you need to do if you suspect somebody has overdosed on Benadryl or any other medication. I'm Dr. Owens and this is Hoosier MD. Let's get started. Everybody's heard of TikTok. It has over 3 billion downloads with over 1 billion active monthly users, and the average user spends one and a half hours on the app every day. It's especially common among young people. In this graph, you can see the age distribution of TikTok users here in the United States, with one third of all users being 10 to 19 years old. Social media challenges are by no means new. In fact, they're older than TikTok itself. In the past, they were relatively harmless and even benefited society. Think back to 2014 in the ALS ice bucket challenge. In one month alone, it raised $115 million for ALS research. Everyone from George Bush to LeBron James and even Donald Trump participated in the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge and it was for a great cause. Fast forward and then TikTok came along. Now don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against TikTok in and of itself and the concept of sharing content socially. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now and I even have a TikTok where I share educational medical videos. However, in recent history, there are some social media challenges that are very concerning and sometimes some really dumb ones come along and when I say dumb I mean really dumb <laughs> Probably not a good idea. We cross into really dangerous challenge territory when we talk about something like a Benadryl challenge, where people are intentionally overdosing just to get views and likes. So why Benadryl? Well, for one, it's widely available. It's probably in your medicine cabinet right now, and if it's not, you could easily go down to the drugstore and get it over the counter. No prescription is necessary. The active ingredient in Benadryl is diphenhydramine. It's an antihistamine normally used to treat allergies. When allergies come on this strong, Benadryl comes on stronger. Diphenhydramine is also found in sleep aids and other brands like Tylenol PM. So overdosing in Benadryl is not something that's new. In fact, Benadryl is among the top 15 drugs that are misused and abused in the entire world. People with suicidal ideation often intentionally overdose and unfortunately I've had to care for a lot of patients who have overdosed on Benadryl. With that being said, here are the 13 signs and symptoms of a Benadryl overdose that you need to be aware of. Number 13, drowsiness and fatigue. So you probably know that Benadryl causes someone to feel sleepy when they take it even at normal doses. So taking more of the medication can just enhance that effect. Number 12, nausea and vomiting. So at normal doses, Benadryl can actually help relieve nausea or the urge to vomit. But when you take way too much of it, the body realizes something is wrong and it tries to get rid of it. If somebody is also very sleepy or drowsy and then they're vomiting, the gastric contents are at risk of going into the airway in that setting. This can be very dangerous and at minimum can cause an aspiration pneumonia. Number 11, constipation. So it can simply slow down the GI tract and if you're admitted to the hospital and you're mostly just laying in a hospital bed, things really aren't moving and so a lot of times people need to be put on a bowel regimen or a laxative. Number 10, ringing in the ears. So this is not unique to Benadryl. Other medications can cause this too, most notably being an aspirin overdose. Number 9, impaired coordination. Clumsiness is very common and it often can mimic being drunk. It's especially dangerous if somebody overdoses in the setting of consuming alcohol too. Number eight, dry mucous membranes. Mucous membranes are things like the inside of your eyelid or your lips and your inside of your mouth. Overdosing in Benadryl can cause all those areas to be very dry. Number seven, hyperthermia. Just like it can make your mouth dry, it can cause you not to sweat too. This is very important because sweating is how we keep our bodies cool. When you're not able to sweat, your body temperature can rise very quickly and it can be very dangerous. Oftentimes you'll see people with very flushed red skin. If their mentation is not intact, a lot of times they'll be taking off their clothes. Number six, blurred vision. Overdosing on Benadryl causes the pupils to dilate and become fixed. This causes vision to be blurry and can even cause something called photophobia where people are avoiding bright lights. That's because they cannot constrict down their pupil 
to restrict the light that's coming into their eye, it can damage their eyes. In fact, it's very dangerous for somebody to go outside without sunglasses. In the hospital, when somebody's recovering from an overdose, this is often the last thing to get better. And if they go home, need to be certain that they're around dim lights and wear sunglasses because they can severely damage their retina. Number five, palpitations. Somebody complaining of a fast heart rate or their heart feels like it's going flip-flop, that's incredibly dangerous in the setting of Benadryl overdose because it can cause an abnormal heart rhythm called torsades. This can lead to cardiac arrest and death. If somebody's in the emergency room and they're suspected of a Benadryl overdose, they need to be getting an electrocardiogram of the heart to look at the rhythm. So if you're in the ER and the doctors haven't done that, you need to be asking about this because this is incredibly important. Number four, altered mental status. Like I said before, it can cause drowsiness and fatigue, but when you take really large amounts, it can cause people to hallucinate. And this is the sole purpose of the challenge, is to take enough medication that it causes people to, you know, trip out or hallucinate and see things that aren't there. That's what is amusing for others to watch. I can tell you from personal experience that people often will see bugs in their peripheral vision or see little sparks or things kind of floating in air that they're constantly trying to pick at. A lot of times they're not really aggressive or agitated but that is a possibility and could occur. If that were the case, then sometimes medications to calm them down or even restraints might be necessary in order to keep them safe and those around them safe. I can tell you that altered mental status in the hospital can be very distressing for the patient, distressing for the family, and one of the most challenging aspects of care. Number three, seizures. Benadryl is kind of unique compared to other antihistamines in the setting of overdose and that it can cause seizures. Number two, urinary retention. This one's very important important because oftentimes it's missed. Even medical professionals will forget this one's associated with a Benadryl overdose. So we have two kidneys that make urine and then that urine gets stored in the bladder until we're ready to urinate. Normally we can urinate on command, right? But in the setting of a Benadryl overdose, people are not able to urinate on their own and so their bladder just begins to fill with urine and they can't do anything about it. That coupled with altered mental status means that they can't tell you that that's happening or maybe even they're not aware of it. So once upon a time I took care of a patient who overdosed dosed on Benadryl and I was going to be taking care of them admitted to the hospital. The patient came up from the emergency room and I was asking a little bit about the patient. And I asked them and I said, so has the patient been able to urinate on their own okay? And they said, oh yeah, yeah, they've been urinating just fine. In fact, they actually uh, wet the bed so we just changed the sheets. And when I heard that, I said, oh no. And some of you who are in the medical field might know where I'm going with this, but I immediately went and grabbed an ultrasound. I was not looking for a baby. I actually used the ultrasound to look at the bladder. And when I did, the bladder was huge. It was full of urine, and we immediately had to get a urinary catheter in this patient. And to so some people, that might not make sense. I said, well, if they were urinating, then what was the big deal? What happened was something called overflow incontinence. Basically, the bladder filled up so much with urine, it kind of reached its tipping point. Pressure builds up up and it just forces its way out. It increases the risk for urinary tract infection and can also cause damage to the kidneys. Number one, respiratory depression and coma. Benadryl is a central nervous system depressant and it can basically, in large amounts, cause people's bodies to shut down to the point where they go into a coma and aren't breathing on their own anymore. So if that happens, somebody would need a breathing tube placed and put on life support or a ventilator to take care of their breathing until they're able to do so on their own again safely. Unfortunately, there have been deaths associated with this TikTok Benadryl challenge, including the teenage girls shown here. This is incredibly sad for their families and it is a shame that anything like this ever came from social media. If you have any suspicion that somebody has overdosed on Benadryl or any other medication, whether that be your child, a sibling, your parents, a friend, a neighbor, get them to the hospital immediately. It is incredibly serious and important that you do that. So let's say you do end up in the hospital. Maybe you brought somebody who did overdose on Benadryl. Doctors are going to have a lot of questions. So they always start with basic stuff. Diagnose medical conditions, what medications they take, allergies and things like that. But when it comes to a medication overdose, there's some very important questions that need answered. Timing. When was the medication taken and when were the onset of symptoms? What type of medication? Or was it more than one medication? Was it regular Benadryl? Or was it Tylenol? PM that contains diphenhydramine and acetaminophen. Acetaminophen overdose can cause liver damage, even liver failure, and that's not something that is suspected with just Benadryl alone. The amount of drug that was taken. This can be very challenging to know, especially if the person is incapable of saying or unwilling to say how much of the medication that they took. In this circumstance, what I would recommend is going to wherever they took the medicine and finding the bottle and bringing that in. So if it was a new bottle and now there's, you know, three quarters of the pills left, 
At least that gives some information. So as far as treatment goes, it's really supportive care and waiting for the medicine to wear off. It depends on really how much of the medicine somebody took, but really you're expecting around the 24 to 48 hour mark with things like the dilated pupils and urinary retention sometimes sticking around a little bit longer. If somebody took a lot of medicine that sent them into a coma, it could definitely last four, five, six days even. Treatment is highly variable when it comes to Benadryl overdose because oftentimes doctors end up treating the secondary complications such as an aspiration pneumonia or damage to the kidneys from that urinary retention I talked about or damage to their eyes and things like that. So sometimes people ask about dialysis. That's a process where you take blood out of the body, you run it through a machine with the hope of taking the medication out of the blood and then returning the blood to the body. This can be done for some medications, but unfortunately Benadryl is highly protein bound and it cannot be removed from the blood via dialysis. So of course the best treatment for a Benadryl overdose is actually preventing it from ever happening in the first place. A good way to do that is to make sure all of your medications are locked up. Also, it's very helpful to have a discussion with your children. Find out what kind of content they are viewing on social media and then talk with them about the dangers of overdosing on medication. You could even show your child this video. There's a big misconception that overdosing on medication that's over the counter is somehow not as bad as overdosing on prescription medication and that is far from the truth. So another great resource to have in the setting of medication overdose or even just chemical exposure, things like pesticides, cleaners, really anything, is the Poison Control Center. Here's their phone number. It's a 24-hour hotline which is continuously staffed by physicians, pharmacists, nurses, and poison information specialists. The phone numbers for the entire United States and calls are automatically routed to the Poison Control Center that covers the territory in which you are from. So what I recommend doing is taking this phone number and saving it in your phone as a contact. That way if any anything comes up in the future, you have a number that you can call. So that's all for today's video. If you liked it, please consider sharing it with others if you found it helpful. And as always, if you want to help me grow my channel, please consider subscribing. I'm Dr. Owens, and this is Hoosier MD. I'll see you at the next video.